Welcome to this Empowered 305 podcast. We have two great guests that I've been wanting to come onto this podcast forever. And they are Officer Vanessa Gonzalez of Miami Police. She's a LGBTQ liaison for Miami Police. And also City of Miami's LGBTQ plus liaison, Michael Roman. Welcome. Thank you so much for having us. I'm honored to have you guys. Um, Not just because it's June, but because there's so many things that you guys do that people actually don't know. I know her story and how she became a liaison, but I want everybody else to know. How did you want to take that that role? Well, when I started in 2016, the, the, the position was created by a previous officer. And once he left the, the section, it was open. Then, uh, uh, unfortunately, on a crime came. And there was this specific person, I think her name is Kenya, um, was asked, like, do you know anybody that um, could help with this role? And you had some ideas, but you, you threw my name in the basket and they asked me. And I said, well, what do I do? They said, well, we really don't know. You have to form this. And so I got the opportunity and here I am today. How many years ago was this? That was in 2019. Yeah. And then in 2021, I became the full-time LGBT liaison officer. And you do a commendable job. Thank you. It's very important that um, a police department such as Miami Police has a liaison. Lots of things that go on that people don't know. You know, crimes against the community and some people don't like to report it. And I think this offers the opportunity to better explain this to people. And I want to take this platform to be able to explain that. And I know you, Michael, you play an integral role with the city of Miami, and you two work together very well. What got you into the role? So my official position, I'm the community partnerships manager for the Department of Human Services. And I feel that I'm very lucky to be in a Department of Human Services because a lot of us refer to ourselves as the heart of the city. We do a lot of the touch points um, to really help community members level up or help them when they need a helping hand. So within that work, we we work a lot within a lot of communities that are disparaged, um, whether it's by color, whether it's by culture, no matter no matter what it is. Um, for example, we oversee our age friendly initiatives, making sure that we're taking care of our seniors. Um, so in 2019, our city commission and our elected officials enacted to create an LGBTQ advisory board. So for th- people who don't know, the city creates all these advisory boards to really help them advise on issues that have to deal with specific populations of city of Miami. Um, so in 2019, they created the LGBTQ advisory board. The pandemic happened. So right when we all regrouped back, um, the city manager went to my director at the time and said, hey, we're really looking for an individual who can oversee the LGBTQ advisory board. Do you have anybody on staff that that might fit the role? Um, They approached me and asked me and I was 100 percent in. And since about 2020, uh, the LGBTQ advisory board has been functional and really making strides, making sure that the city of Miami really has a thoughtfulness on how to be inclusive, specifically with the LGBTQ community. That's awesome. How do you both work together to have those outreach, those programs to the community? Can you harp on it a little? Well, Michael reached out to me when the advisory board uh, came on board. Um, Hey, are you interested in being part of this board? And then I was actually nominated by one of the commissioners uh, to, to be part of the advisory board. And once I came in in that role and I met Michael, I think that was like the beginning of the best relationship ever. And Michael is really the spearhead of a lot of the programs, and he just makes sure that I'm involved in anything and everything possible. So you could talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's really important to understand that for so many generations and so many decades, there's been a big divide between law enforcement and the LGBTQ community. In fact, now June Pride Month, we we look at it as a recognition of what happened in 1969 in Stonewall, where police were invading the Stonewall Inn in New York yeah. unlawfully and really just arresting LGBTQ people for existing in their own safe personal space. Yeah. Um, so, so there's been a lot of work in bridging law enforcement and the community overall. And since we, since I mean, I I'm a community partner, I'm a community member, and having law enforcement right there next to me is just the first step um, to creating that bridge. So every time we do things, we do them together with that mindset. And it's important because um, just when you had the raising of the flag at City Hall, 
how important it is to see other agencies, other law enforcement agencies involved as well. So there were other law enforcement agencies here at City Hall when they were raising the flag, and it takes a lot of work. And I know it does take a lot of work, and there are smaller agencies. So here you have Miami Police, the city of Miami, working together to be able to send the, the message out and showing the community that there is um, someone that can you know, help them. Talk to me about Safe Place. So the Safe Place initiative was something that was created back in Seattle. There was a 2015, there was a pride that happened there and there was eight crimes that were unreported. The next year, the, the actual first full-time LGBT liaison nationwide was Jim Ritter. And so he said, what can we do to bridge this gap for them not to be uncomfortable uh, with calling the police? So he created the Safe Place initiative. And after that, the next year, there was those another eight hate crimes, which then um, became felony arrests and everything. And that's when he saw that the program was a hit. After that, it started going nationwide. The city of Miami implemented in 2017, I believe. And then once I became the part-time liaison in 2019, that's when I kind of took over the program. I'm in the process of, of revamping it, but basically what it is, it's a decal that's placed in outside of businesses within the city of Miami that say that they're a safe place. Their job function is to have a, a safe place for someone to stay in a public area within their organization, call the police, and then we come and handle it from there. So it's kind of showing the community, like, I could come in here, this business supports us. And it's not just LGBT related, it's also hate crimes. So it just says report hate crimes. So it's, it's the, the rainbows are universal to show everybody that they're inclusive. And so that's what we do here. How do you look into those hate crimes involving the LGBTQ plus community. How does the Miami Police Department do that? Because obviously I know the officer goes out and writes the report, then they indicate that it's a hate crime and that it could be linked to LGBTQ plus, right? The community, How, what do you do? So my job as the liaison is kind of like a resource. And what happens is a crime happens in the city of Miami, the initial officer does do the report and then it gets assigned to a detective. In the interim of that, it could go already go to the state attorney's office and they automatically contact me. Once they contact me, I try going down the steps. If, is there someone assigned? Did a victim advocate contact the victim? What can I do to bridge the gap? Is there something going on? And once something happens, I could figure out what went well and what went wrong, and then I could go back to the officers and kind of uh, mediate what could have been better. There are some law enforcement sensitive information things that you cannot share with Michael. But within that, you still have a great line of communication. Michael, what are memorable or unforgettable moments that you have as a liaison in your role? Good moments or bad moments? Either. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there, there, there's been so many joyous moments, um, you know, besides random individuals reaching out to me needing some type of assistance or some type of help and that's where i mentioned being placed in the department of human services it's really helpful because sometimes there's issues with homelessness um, or workforce that they need a job um, and we can try to connect because that's what we do in our department um, when situations like that happen uh, officer gonzalez can reach out to me which she does and says hey do you have any resources that can help this individual specifically for X, Y, and Z. Um, and of course, I can open up my human awesome. services Rolodex and be able to provide those wraparound services to that victim to make sure that we're, we're, we're taking care of them. Um, you know, I think that's really important. You know, of course, looking at some of the bad things, you know, this this position comes with a little bit of flack from the community. Um, we have pride for a reason. Um, there's still a lot of hate out in the community. And over this last month, even on social media, we see a lot of those comments. And that really stings and it really hurts because Miami has always been known for being ground zero, for being so melting potish that we accept everybody and anyone and sometimes it's just a reminder that maybe that's not often the case and that's why we're in these positions to do that work just to create a little bit more awareness and for many generations our community has always talked about acceptance wanting to be accepted and i think this year especially this pride has switched that around a little bit to it's okay if you don't accept me, but let's start with respect. How about you respect me first, um, just being a human being? So that's been one of the, the negative experiences that I've seen is, is there has been an amplified amount of hate um, around the LGBTQ community recently. 
But I think you two do a phenomenal job on getting the message out and, and kind of um, giving that safety net to the community. How can the community get involved and support your efforts in promoting LGBTQ inclusivity and safety? I know we spoke about with Vanessa, but is there something else? Can either of you give me some insight on that? Of course, I think right now allyship is extremely important and allyship allyship can look very different amongst how you want to help. Um, you know, and, and that really just depends on the individual person. But there's opportunities to volunteer at organizations throughout the city. There's opportunities to just come out and show up at an event and show that there's there's support from the community. Um, and just doing that little can go a very long way. There's organizations that have great programs and initiatives, and they're trying to collect information and issue surveys and create focus groups. And if that's something that you want to be more engaged in, you can always contact me and I can connect you to any type of resource to help anybody who wants to be engaged. Yeah. What other resources specifically that maybe you can share and we can share with our viewers and those that are listening? Well, I'll start. Um, you know, one organization is Pride Lines. Pride Lines is the only city of Miami LGBTQ community center. They recently just moved to Liberty City at 5525 Northwest 7th Avenue. Um, and they are such a great safe haven for all of the LGBTQ community in the city of Miami. Um, there are some other great organizations. This year is an uh, uh, election year, and they're SAVE. SAVE has been around for so many decades. A lot of people know SAVE back in the days as SAVE Aid. Um, they, they do a lot uh, of work within elected officials and making sure that, you know, they're endorsing certain candidates. So that's another organization to look survivors at. Pathway. There's Survivors Pathway, which is right down the street from the City of Miami Administration Building. Um, and they're great not only for the LGBTQ community, but for anybody who's ever been a victim of domestic violence. Um, and the list goes on and on. There are so many organizations and out that's, there. And that's key. People, Lots of people probably don't know. And we have so many people moving to Miami that don't know who they can reach out to. And this is why I want to use this platform mm -hmm. so that people can understand that they can reach out to you, they can reach out to you, and you can provide them with additional information, specifically City of Miami. You know, we're a big city, we're growing upward, and there's so many people wanting to live here because it's such a wonderful city, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we're fortunate enough to be able to work here and, and, and be able to serve that community as well. What, what future goals or projects do you both have that maybe um, you can share something of your doing, so are you before we wrap it up? Well, future goals, I, just, uh, I was just approved to open an internal uh, group within the Miami Police Department to help our employees, right? To, to help them, not only the ones part of the community, but maybe family members of the community. And that's like a big goal that I've had since I became the liaison, is finding something in-house in to kind of help everyone. And then once that does well, my goal is to expand it and work with Michael and kind of bring that over to, to the MRC to, to get everybody together so we can have a big platform where everybody feels comfortable, share information, resources, support, because there's parents of LGBT kids that they don't know what to do or don't feel supported, and I, I want to have formed that group. So that's my biggest thing now. And I know Commissioner um, Damian Pardo is a big um, supporter as well, and he, he said it during the raising of the flag at City Hall. And he's, I know he's going to have your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we love, we love Commissioner Pardo. Um, you know, one of the, the important things that we've done and we're going to continue to do is the Human Rights Campaign has a Municipal Equality Index score. Um, so Google HRC MEI score, and it ranks city municipalities on a scale from zero to 100 to show how inclusive that city government is operating and working. Um, when the LGBTQ advisory board first started, our score was a 75. And my initial thing was if I came home with a 75, my mom was like, that's a C, <laughs> you got to go do better. Oh, so I, I was like, <laughs> we need to do better. We're not a C city. Um, luckily, we went back to commission. Commission was like, yes, we need to fix this score. Our commissioners created a resolution for the city manager to work to do anything we needed to do to get our score to 100. Um, our city manager, Noriega, has been amazing and his team and allowing me to work with all the city of Miami departments, the respective departments, to implement certain things to get our score to 100. 
um, you know, passing certain resolutions to make sure that, you know, anti-bullying policies are updated, Um, you know, that we're looking at single occupancy restrooms and maybe not putting men or women, but it's a restroom for anybody, just restroom, you know, so really looking at just little ways that the city operates um, and, and get our score to 100. So after a year of doing that, we got our score to 89. And then this past year, we got our score to 100. Awesome. So even though we're at 100 and we got to that point, if we don't submit all the information, we don't show that we're continuing yeah. to support the community, our score is going to fall again. So that's a big accomplishment that we have and a big accomplishment I'd like to continue awesome. is making sure that we stay at 100 to show that we are a safe place in, yeah. in Miami-Dade County. And one, and one of the requirements is actually to have uh, LGBT liaison in the police department and to report hate crime. So because of that, I think that alone is 10 awesome. of the points. Well, that's you both are doing a remarkable job. I've Thank been you. able to see that through the years and you guys work together so great and you have a great line of communication. I know that there's other topics that we're going to want to talk about at a later podcast. And I know that there's so many projects and I know you still have underway and in your mind to do. And um, I have an open invitation for you guys to come back. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, I'm a big supporter of you guys and whatever you guys need. You know, you can come here and and use us to be able to better inform people. And um, there we go. I can foresee you guys are going to just continue. You have an A plus rating for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, one of the things I just want everybody to really like hone in on is let's live with love. You know, let's put love out there. That yeah. becomes really important. We see so much hate. We see so much negativity. Um, let's just approach life with love. I think we'll all be better off. Awesome. Thank you both for joining us here today. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. Awesome. Well, that's a wrap for our Empower 305 podcast. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.